addiction free in Christ, a ministry of miracles. And this is the addiction seminar for 2023, um, hosted by CTN WTJR TV 16 and filmed at CTN WTJR 16 Quincy, Illinois. And I have two special guests with me this morning. Always, we always have Pastor Julie Jenkins with us with everything we do. But this year for the addiction seminar, in fact, he's with us for every addiction seminar, is now Adam Gibson. And I, I was thinking about detec detective, but you're now a sergeant. Yep, so Sergeant Adam Gibson. Yep. Yes, congratulations. Thank you. And this is the addiction seminar, and the addiction seminar this year is the addiction crisis destroying our nation, the cause and the cure. So we're going to be looking at the cause, and we're going to be looking at the cure. Now, first of all, I want to go to Pastor Julie, and she's going to tell you about in the, the conference books, okay? Yes, um, I'd like to encourage you to go to our website at addictionfreeinchrist.com and click on Addiction Seminar 2023 to download the free Addiction Seminar book so that you can follow along. And we also would like to thank our sponsors that were a part of putting this uh, seminar together. You can see a list of the entire sponsors and everything on page three. And uh, throughout the book, you'll actually see their ads and also the material we cover. So please uh, follow along with us and, and contact us if you have any questions on how to do that at 217-617-5577. We'd love to help you with that, um, get that downloaded or get it to you. Well, Pastor Julie, while you're talking, uh, let's look at the cause. Let's look at the cause, and, and well, the cause is explained very thoroughly in the Bible, isn't it? Yes, it says in mm -hmm. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, and it like, reads like today's headlines. It says, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of mm -hmm. monies, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power and from such people turn away. You know, and uh, uh, let me go back to one thing. It says the last days perilous times will come. Mm -hmm. uh, the Greek word for perilous is ragingly insane. Sergeant Gibson, that's probably what you're seeing every day anymore. It, uh, it it's getting more and more that way. That's, it is, isn't that, it? That is correct. Yes. Okay. Go on, Julie. What else yes. does it say? And this is also um, what we see in many of the addictions and where some people uh, completely lose control. The Greek word is halepos, and um, you see where people um, are losing control. People with addictions have often lost control. They're haughty headstrong, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And as we saw earlier just now, this is the face of addiction and it's the cause of addiction. And uh, we're coming from a standpoint, Pastor Jerry and I, where we understand what addiction is and, and how it takes over and how you can be totally set free through the power of Jesus Christ. So um, we're just so glad to be here to present this seminar. Hey man, what else does it say about the cause? Well, the Bible tells us about the cause in Proverbs 14, 12. And it says, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end is the way of death. You it's, know, addiction advertises as something yes. wonderful, but it is the way of death. And in Ephesians 6, 12 explains the spiritual aspect of addiction. It says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Mm -hmm. And this explains exactly the, what the cause of addiction is. It's That's a spiritual right. battle. Um, due to our sinful mm. nature that we are born with that goes back all the way to our first parents, Adam and Eve. We believe in the literal interpretation of the Bible. You go to Genesis, the third chapter, it shows the fall of mankind. And so we do have that spiritual battle. So every morning when we wake up, uh, we're heading into a battle zone because of our sinful nature that we are born with. But praise God, because of the love of God, 
uh, Jesus gave us victory over the cause and yes. he gave us the cure in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Let's and go back and look at the cause again though, Julie. Mm -hmm. uh, what, is it, what does it say in John, or 1 John 2, 15 through 18? This is where we are today. Yes, um, John has awesome advice. It's the Holy Spirit speaking through him. It says, do not love the world nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the world, the eyes, the pride of our life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away with yes. the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, it is the last hour. And as I have, as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. Amen. So this ex passage explains many things in the world that we see, uh, where the, the love of the world and, and many of the things people become addicted to. It says, do not love the world nor the things in the world. And you see that alone can be an addiction. An addiction is anything that controls our mind, spirit, our body. That is, if it is not the love of God. And John 3, 16 again said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God loves you and wants to help you or your loved one become free. Yes. And that's what uh, the amazing gift. And as children of God, he is our heavenly father. Our first love should be for God the Father, Jesus Christ his son, who is our savior, redeemer, and soon coming king who sends us the Holy Spirit to dwell in us and more than anything else in existence. You see, in 1 John 2, 16, it says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, these are the major causes of addiction. They certainly are, they certainly are. Now we're on page 13, if you're following along in with your book. Yes. Uh, what do we say on 13 here? Well, it says this is the major cause of addiction when we talk about the lust of the flesh and yeah. the lust of the eye. This is the cause of sexual and pornography addiction, which is a major problem in the United States. You know, the enemy will try to invert what, what is normal and natural and turn it around to a negative thing. The number of people in the United States leaving with sexual addiction is currently estimated at 12 to 30 million. A study found that 4.7 million U.S. adults spend up to more than 11 hours per week looking at pornography online. Pornography is a $15 billion industry. Yeah, and I'd like to pick it up there. Uh, sure. Sexual and pornography addiction, it is the most misunderstood uh, addiction that there is today. The, the, the thing that, I took an advanced course on counseling and sexual addiction at Golden Valley Institute of Behavioral Medicine under Dr. Patrick Carnes. Uh, the minute somebody looks at a piece of pornography the endorphins in their bloodstream produce a chemical to their brain which is more powerful than morphine. Uh, so as they turn the page and look, and as they turn the page and look, uh, they, were, they got a drug that their own body's producing that produces a chemical to their brain more powerful than morphine. As they continue to look, pretty soon that addiction or that chemical takes over and they're out of control. And they do things they would never do otherwise. This is one of the most deadly addictions there is because again the average person has no idea that their own body is producing the chemical and so I, I probably you run into some crazy things like that too don't you we do see uh, cases several cases as it relates to sexual addiction yeah. um, cases involving um, sexual assault on adults uh, sexual assault of children um, you see cases of uh, illegal videotaping going yes. on. Um, so, so that is something that, that, that we do see. It's a major problem as one that's sort of swept under the rug sometimes, yes. though, isn't it? 
I mean, because we've got so many other problems that probably we don't really deal with it that much. That's correct. Uh, what else we got here, Julie? Okay. Um, well, we looked at, we're looking now at the addiction of alcohol on page 15. It's caused by the same uh, source as the other addictions. It's driven by our own sinful nature and um, which, you know, a physical dependency, which goes clear back to the fall of Adam and Eve as they rebelled against God. And as human beings, we have to deal with that sinful nature on a daily basis, wanting to fulfill the desires of our flesh. Again, the Bible says in Proverbs 14, 12, there is a way that seems right to man, but the end is the way of death. So according to the CDC, it shows that more than 140,000 people die from excessive alcohol use in the United States every year. Okay, that, I'd like to go to Sergeant Gibson on this mm -hmm. because this is a major problem I think he's facing every day. Alcohol, especially being uh, on, on patrol on the night shift, uh, alcohol is probably one of the most prevalent drugs that we deal with as it relates to nearly every call that we go on. Really? Uh, whether it be uh, domestic disturbances, uh, neighborhood disputes, uh, car crashes. Uh, it seems like a majority of our calls, uh, especially on the, on the night shift and even through the day shift, uh, are in some way um, contributed to by alcohol. So this is one of our major problems, isn't it? Mm -hmm. A lot of times we hear about every other major problem, but this is a big one that we, the, our nation sort of swept under the rug, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see some statistics over here, Julie. Yeah. On a page here, uh, what's it, page 19, what do you page got? Page 19, um, we first looked at alcohol use and the, how it affects men, you know, the health risks. And the source of this information is cdc.gov, and it talks about um, the alcohol problem. It says yeah, men let me, have a... Let me jump in there for a sure. minute. <clears throat> this is something that most people don't realize, and I want to talk about this for a minute. I have to admit this. I was a serious alcoholic for years, till I was 51 years old and accepted Christ. And after that, I came down with cancer. And the cancer had eaten out of my calling into my lymph nodes and they took me to the hospital ready to die and I found out that if you're an alcoholic you got an 80 percent better chance of having colon cancer than if you're not so it's not only what it does to the family it's not only what Sergeant Gibson's dealing with every day on the street mm -hmm. it's deadly mm -hmm. but most people don't think of alcohol being something that's going to kill you eventually mm -hmm. but it's probably as bad or worse than some of the drugs were taken. Yes, right? yeah, absolutely. So I say so. Yeah. Julie, you got some other statistics sure. on that. Sure. Uh, men have higher rates of alcohol related hospitalizations than women. More than three quarters of deaths from excessive drinking are among males, totaling more than 97,000 deaths each year in the United States. There's if you think at it, break it down this way, it's 380 deaths each day in the United States due to excessive alcohol use. Among drivers in fatal motor vehicle traffic crashes, men are 50% more likely to have been uh, intoxicated. Excessive alcohol consumption increases uh, the risk for aggression and risk for physical assaulting another person. Alcohol is the key risk factor for sexual violence. Uh, males are three more times more likely to die by suicide than than males. So well, Sergeant Gibson was right. That's one of our main problems that we're really facing that's destroying our nation. And it's just very common because nobody thinks of, you know, they think about heroin and all the other drugs as being a major problem, which they are. But alcohol is one of the main ones, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, it definitely contributes to a, a large majority of, of calls for police service. Yes. So that's something we really need to get serious about and get serious about what, what's going on with it. Sergeant Gibson, let me ask you one thing. Let's talk a little about, a bit about fentanyl. Are you running into much, much of that or any of those kind of drugs coming into the area right now? Uh, we, we do see uh, a, a, a fair amount of fentanyl, uh, especially uh, other drugs. We're starting to see methamphetamine laced with fentanyl. We're, we've really? seen marijuana laced with fentanyl. Uh, and we've seen uh, 
a, a large number of illegal pill cases where people have purchased pills on the dark web, uh, which are sold as Xanax or other drugs of abuse, which are actually fentanyl. So people take mm -hmm. those thinking that it's a Xanax and it's actually fentanyl and it's, it's deadly. Fentanyl's deadly in very minute amounts. Oh my. Well, we've looked at the problem now. We looked at the cause. Mm -hmm. Julie, we better look at the cure because that's yes. what we need to get down to. We need yeah. to find out what is a cure for this problem. And I think you'll find out, Paige, what page is that on, Julie? Uh, uh, let's see, it starts on page 43. All right, let's go to 43 and see what it says. So we looked at the cause, which was goes back to the book of Genesis, the fall of mankind in the Garden of Eden, and when the, where Adam and Eve uh, went against God's word when Eve took of the fruit, and it changed things. And the changes, then the cause has never changed. As we go to the word of God, uh, we covered that where it says, John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And it says, but he who comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen as having been done by God. But the cure is the, on page 45, the, this cure is the only cure for the addiction Christ is destroying our nation is Jesus Christ, who is the living Word of God. I like to talk about that. The thing of it is, there's many good programs out there that are have you stay sober one day at a time and this and that by working a program. But you don't really need a program. I hate to tell you that because I'm one that can tell you the only thing that would deliver you from alcohol or any other drug or any of the problems we're talking about today is when you will surrender your life to Jesus Christ. The minute you surrender your life to Jesus Christ, God takes the desire away and the desire will be totally taken away. That happened to me November 9th, 1986. Since then, I've never had the desire to take a drink of alcohol, smoke a cigarette or do any of the horrible things that I did because of the addiction. So there's a lot of programs out there and they're good programs, there's nothing wrong with them. Mm -hmm. But you can go one day at a time and work all the programs you want. But till the day you surrender your life to Jesus Christ, there is no hope. There's nothing else. He's the only thing that can do it. And so we need to really concentrate on that. I want you to go, Julie, would you go on page 43 and pick that up for it talks about salvation. Sure, for God so loved the world, it says in John 3, 16 through 21, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world should be th saved through him. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone who practices evil hates the light and does not come into the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. And Jesus said, you know, you must be born again in John 3. And um, that's the, where you get the new nature that God gives you where he takes over your whole entire life and then delivers you from whatever problem. It can be more than alcohol or drugs. It can be anything life controlling. And this cure is the only cure for the addiction crisis destroying our nation. The cure is the living Word of God. And going back to the cure again, the Bible said in, in John 8, 31 through 32, Jesus was speaking. He said, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And then again in John 8, 36, we want to encourage you with what Jesus said. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. This is the only cure for the crisis destroying our nation. And this has been proved through our programs uh, where we see people being delivered through the power of Jesus Christ because there's no human program or theory of man. The only answer to the crisis destroying our nation is found in the Word of God. Some scriptures that we looked at before we need to look at again where the Bible says in Proverbs 14, 12, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. 
But Jesus promised us in God's word that instead of living with anxiety, worry, fear, and depression and addictions destroying our nation, if we would just surrender to him that he has a much better plan in the Gospel of John 14, 1 through 6. And this is such a beautiful scripture. It says, Jesus is speaking. He says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am there, you may be also. And if where I go, you know, then the way you know. And Thomas, who is one of his disciples, said, Lord, we do not know where you're going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. What else did you say about the cure? Well, how does it happen for somebody to find this way and find this truth is also in the Bible, which is John 6, 44. Jesus says, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up at the last day. So God actually will draw you to him and then he will raise you up. It says in John 15, 16, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, that he might give you. Then he also gave us a helper, which is the Holy Spirit. He said in John 14, 15 through 18, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. So God promises, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you in Hebrews 13, 5. And he, he means what he says. Again, he said in John 14, 25 through 27, these things I have spoken to you while being present with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and will bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. We're not born to carry stress, but God gives us the scripture and the peace to take away that stress through the power of his word. And yes. then again, um, in John 16, 13, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he speaks, he will tell you. And also he said, Jesus spoke to them in John 28, 18, all authority has been given to me in heaven on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of this age. Amen. So after reading this, you will find the cure is much more powerful than the cause. And we want you to contact us at 217-617-5577. And remember what Jesus said, therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. That's now, Donette yes. Douglas is going to bring us a song pretty well, soon. Well, just a few minutes, but sure. let's go back to that one scripture. Yes. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. And that's what happens when a person surrenders their life to Jesus Christ. Right. And when you surrender your life to Jesus Christ and God sets you totally free, yeah. I'll tell you what, it makes <sighs> Sergeant Gibson's job a lot easier, <laughs> I guarantee you. So I know that he's very excited about that. That's why he tries to come and help us every year and talk what's going on in Quincy and, and around and what the police department's doing. And I want to tell you what, it's right now one thing I want to say. If we ever needed to thank God for these men and women in the police department, you better do it today because it's the difference between life and death. Thank you. Sergeant Gibson. Thank you, Pastor Jenkins. Thank you for listening. There's somebody out there hurt and confused An innocent child being abused There's 
there's somebody out there whose heart is breaking in two. There's somebody out there feeling alone, a husband, a wife, being done wrong. There's somebody out there shattered from a broken home. But there's somebody out there with arms open wide. He wants to embrace you, wipe the tears from your eyes. He's hopeful for the hopeless. He'll carry the burden you bear. When you don't have a prayer, there's somebody out there. There's somebody out there who thought it was cool to keep taking chances, thinking they'd never lose. So they're hooked on a feeling that's left them empty and full. There's somebody out there who can't quite decide Yeah.